This is Doug with fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. I think uh, the Lord's saying it's time to tell you about uh, what kind of started this crazy ride for me. It was about three years ago. I'd been writing on the internet about the state of the church and I was real frustrated with the giant mega church that we'd been going to, Baptist Church, Southern Baptist. And uh, I knew that there was a lot of problems. I was supporting native missionaries in other countries. I was running a successful business and that was thriving and supporting micro lending projects and really starting to understand that my business could be used for ministry. I read a book called uh, Revolution in World Missions by Gospel for Asia. It's available free on www.gfa.org. You can get on there. They'll send you the free book. Uh, it'll, it'll totally mess with your head. Anyway, um, I, I understood that stuff is happening in other countries. People are getting healed and delivered. Angels are showing up. People are regrowing limbs and getting raised from the dead. And, and I, I saw enough evidence to know, to believe that that was really happening. And, and, and why it wasn't happening in America, I didn't know. And why it wasn't happening in my life, I didn't know. But I wanted it. And uh, I wanted to see Jesus move. I wanted to see the church restored. I wanted to see her walking in victory. And Anyway, I, I met this guy through the internet, a revivalist guy from New Zealand. And we sat down and we had lunch. And I said, look, I just feel like God's calling me to say something about this stuff. And... He said, I really like what you're saying, but you know what you're missing is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I said, I've had the Holy Spirit since I was six years old, thank you very much. And uh, uh, he said, no, no, not, not the redemptive aspect of the Holy Spirit, the empowering aspect of the Holy Spirit. And we talked about the difference. Because I got nothing in the Southern Baptist Church ever told me that there was something that happened to Peter in the upper room that was different than just accepting Jesus as your personal Savior. And he went from a guy that denied Christ three times because a, a, a maid confronted him to to a guy that his first extemporaneous sermon 3,000 people got saved and he's talking other languages and breaking out of jail and his shadows healing people something happened and whatever happened I didn't get it in the Baptist Church and I wanted it anyway so Tuesday November 23rd 2005 I went down to a, a, a house meeting here on the other side of town with some folks that I knew were sincere that I knew loved Jesus and for to pray for me to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and I've got no context for this, no frame of reference, no, no expectation of what needs to happen. I know that I'm praying for the big stuff. I'm praying for wisdom. Tongues is at the bottom of the list. I've never been around tongues. I don't particularly care for whatever. I know how it works. I know what it's, I'm, I'm not saying it's not real, but I'm not asking for that. That's at the bottom of the list. I'm asking for wisdom. And I, I went to that meeting fully hungry, really, really desperate for God. Prayed up, I thought. We all sat around and talk for like a half hour while I'm chomping at the bit to get to the praying and they put a chair in the middle of the room and say sit here and we're going to lay hands on you and pray and I'm like no I'm going to be doing this on my knees so they had to kind of bend over and <laughs> put their hand on my shoulder for about 45 minutes I'm repenting of anything I'm like Lord show me anything anything that stands between me and you and and I'll say I'm sorry and we'll get it out of the way and 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 uh like machine gun fire he's showing me stuff and, and I don't have a real fancy resume. I was never on crack or anything. But he's showing me stuff and, and rebellion and things that I knew I shouldn't have done that I did. And, and he told me to go visit my grandma in the hospital, and I didn't. And Anyway, like machine gun fire for 45 minutes, I'm repenting for stuff. And, and I prayed the craziest prayer I've ever heard anybody pray. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit made me do it. And uh, I'm not telling you because you should pray this prayer. <laughs> I'm just telling you to be transparent here and because the Lord wants me to tell the story. So I prayed with all my heart, Lord, I don't care what it costs. My business, my life, my family, my wife, prison, torture, I just want to be the most dangerous person to Satan on the planet. <laughs> Isn't that stupid? Anyway, and uh, I didn't mean it in a competitive way, like I want to be more dangerous than Brother Yun in China or Richard Wormbrand or Brother Andrew or somebody like that. I just meant, I've got a pop gun, please give me a nuke. Please, just as big as you can, I just want to make a difference, whatever it takes. Anyway, after about 45 minutes of repenting and praying and begging and pleading, and Lord, please give me wisdom, I want to see through the eyes of Jesus. I prayed over and over, I want to see through the eyes of Jesus. That's maximum wisdom. Anyway, uh... After about 45 minutes repenting, we kind of hit a dead spot, and um, somebody there felt to stand me up. So I'm standing up, and I heard the Lord real loud. And you can check with him. Don't take my word for it. 
He said, you wanted to see through the eyes of Jesus, I'll show you. And I'm standing there with my eyes closed, but it wouldn't have made any difference whether they were closed or open. This vision starts. And I'm looking down on the globe, and down in front of me is the planet. And on the left side, there's America and this greasy, oily blackness spreading little tendrils out all over the planet. And I can feel the wrath of God in my chest like an ice pick. And I'm grabbing my chest and groaning, and I can feel how angry he is at this blackness that's spreading out all over the world. And on the other side, there's a reel of faces of little kids whipping by real fast. And it'll stop, and there's a kid in India, and he's dying and lost, and it's because of the black stuff. And I know that this black stuff is, is Hollywood and denominationalism and abortion and, and prosperity gospel. And, and it's all of the stuff that we're exporting all over the world. But mostly, he's mad at the church. Because we have the light. We had the light, and it's black out there. And we're exporting it all over the world. And it's horrible. And, and the faces of the little kids are going by real fast. Five, six-year-old kids. And it'll stop, and there's a kid in China, and he's dying, and it's because of the black stuff and a kid in India, and a kid in Appalachia, and a kid in, in, in the UK, and over and over and over. And I'm watching the faces whip by, and I'm, and I'm grabbing my chest, and I'm groaning, and I'm praying, and I'm begging. I'm like, Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for what we've done to the children, Lord. Please, Lord, have mercy. Please have mercy. Please, I'm sorry, Lord, whatever it takes, Lord. Please, I want to turn it around. I want to... St Please, whatever we have to do, please. How are we not toast by now for how horrible this is? Lord, I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> and I'm begging and pleading and please have mercy. Please have mercy. And the kids are whipping by. <laughs> for ten minutes, I cried and I cried and I grabbed it. Kirsten was standing there, ten-year-old girl, and I grabbed her. I pet her head. And please, just I had to have somebody to apologize to, begging and pleading and... Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And for 10 minutes, I watch the black stuff, and I feel the wrath of God at what we're doing and the love that he has for these children that we're torturing and, and, and the, the severity of God and the mercy of God both at the same time, and my chest is aching, and I'm groaning. And after about 10 minutes, the faces just kind of click, click, click and run out, and it goes black. <clears throat> and the Lord says real clearly, you wanted to see through the eyes of Jesus. I showed you everybody. Now you're responsible. I said, uh, Lord, what do you mean you showed me everybody? That was like six and a half billion people just went by? Yeah, that was everybody. Okay, well, I know people like right before they hit a deer, their whole life flashes before their eyes. So, okay, all right, fine, whatever. Brain, God, time, fine. That was six and a half billion people. What do you mean I'm responsible? Well, you said you wanted to be the most dangerous person on the planet to Satan, so now you're responsible. I said, uh, Lord, you're telling lots of other people they're responsible too, right? It's not just me. Doesn't matter. You said you would. Now go. That's what he said to Peter. What is that to thee? You go. And then it ended. And we sit down around the circle, and I don't know what to expect from this, but evidently it wasn't their normal experience either. It took about an hour, and I'm grabbing my chest and groaning and aching. I'm like, oh God, oh God, and I want to cry and go home and hide under the bed. And they're like, what was that? And, <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, we're in big trouble. You have no idea. We're screwed. I had no idea. We got to do something right now. This is horrible. I have no idea. <laughs> from that night on, can't watch TV, can't play video games, can't get a picture of anybody that's not my wife in my head. Turn my business upside down, turn my life upside down. Pretty much everything I offered up, he's cost me. it's cost me. My business, my life, family, kids, pretty much everything, he took me up on it. And I wouldn't do any of it over. Because I walk holding his hand, because I've seen miracles, I've seen people change. I've seen that this war is real, and I've seen that we're toast if we don't hurry. We are toast if we don't hurry. Judgment is coming. Your time is running out. For the damage that you've done, for the things that you've participated in, it's time to repent. There's no other hope. Weep and mourn before the altar, and he'll turn. 